for the past five years, we've been doing a loyalty rewards programs um, as absolutely. And last year, we decided to enter the blockchain space. Mm -hmm. So it was a natural evolution because we wanted to find a particular solution that would be, um, I guess you can say, a natural evolution towards the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So something that can allow us to scale, mm -hmm. something that can allow us to go global, and something that can also allow us to take advantage of this new technology. How good is this blockchain solution for our viewers, for our consumers? To put it uh, simply, it just simply means that the points that I earn here, I can now use them in merchants abroad. So, but if I use my credit cards, I can do that also. Yes, so that's, that's the end game. So right mm -hmm. now what we're doing is we're planting the seeds. Mm -hmm. We're coming up with what we call earning and redemption partners and also reward partners. Across, through, through the platform, so yes. across different brands. All over the world. So if you're an SME and you can't afford to have your own loyalty rewards program, mm -hmm. we give it for free, the platform. Mm -hmm. We give you some points to give away so you can try it out and see its effectivity. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that merchants would tell us is, why would I give points to someone when they're not going to use it exactly. in my store? Yeah. Yeah. Well, other people will use the points they earn elsewhere in your store, creating what we call so a network a give effect. To take. Yeah. Yes. So when we convince them that that actually works and we show them some data, then they jump onto the program. Yeah. So once we create the earning and redeeming partners, then we look at the big brand partners we want to strategically partner with. Mm -hmm. um, these are uh, brands like Cebu Pacific, 7-Eleven, Grab, Lazada, which will be our rewards partners. So basically, you've got the platform then, then you can white label it for any brand, and because there's a lot of cross transactions, yes. then you have the, what they say, the network effect, right? Yes, it's interoperability. That's the key word right now. It's not anywhere creating a platform that you will dominate. It's about making sure these platforms are interoperable. And seamless. Right? Yeah, and seamless. If you had an app and you were operating in Europe and you wanted a loyalty rewards program, you can simply, through API, integrate our app. And then now you can issue um, the loyal coin, which is the digital asset as reward. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the loyal coin that we issue out, you can now use that to avail of actual products and services mm -hmm. on the app. But are these things not just an advantage because you can use it on many different brands. Are they also cheaper? Um, yes. So the idea really is you want to be able to uh, give value to your customers. And this entire uh, process is about the customer journey. Mm -hmm. We have to value the customer journey primarily because they are getting very emotional about their finances and the rewards points that they earn. So they won't have to spend 400,000 mm -hmm. pesos won't. for they one won't have point. To spend, no. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, how much does it amount to? Well, we, we recommend a 1 to 3% rewards ratio. So mm -hmm. for example, if you are a, a merchant and I spend 1,000 pesos in your establishment, I get 3% or 30 pesos worth of the digital asset mm -hmm. in return. So that's not bad. Mm -hmm. And some people, they like, they like you know, the game of going to one merchant to another, and they see it on their app that slowly they're earning these points. Yeah. And then the knowledge that if I go to Korea or Japan mm -hmm. or Singapore and I find a merchant there, that's part of the gamification process. Sure. Well, you know, yeah, the right. struggle is real for people who don't have that app, huh? right? Yes. For me, my, my purse is full of store, <laughs> store reward cards yes. and I have no idea how much I have yes. or when things are going to expire and how I can use them and how I can take advantage because essentially, like me, I'm a budget freak, right? So mm. I, I excel and spreadsheet yeah. and social everything yes. and even the points I monitor them, but it's hard to do that when it you is. have 20 stores in it your is. So it you're is. doing a dashboard basically in your app. Right? Exactly. That's easier done there. Yes, I mean, in the US, uh, you have an average of about 20 loyalty programs enrolled per household. In the UK, it's about 14. Well, so I'm an average. <laughs> <laughs> and globally, about $100 billion worth of loyalty points are lost because they expire, they're wow. unused. That's a pretty significant number. So you'd want to have a nice chunk of that. And, and actually make the customers uh, satisfied with the program that you have. But there's yeah. a cost to the customer also. Um, they have to pay. I mean, I buy, but remember, yeah. uh, Watson's is yes. like 100 pesos mm. per card. Yes. At least that one doesn't expire, but some cards expire in some a year. Yes, some cards right? expire. And there's a cost to us. For merchants, what we say is that this is actually a marketing cost. Mm -hmm. So what they issue out as a reward um, in terms of the digital asset, 
those points when they're using other merchants what we do for the merchants so they don't experience any okay. volatility for example mm -hmm. we auto liquidate mm -hmm. and then they bill us and then we send in peso value so back the back yeah. to the customer so about you you basically use design thinking to solve these pain points for both vendors and yes. subscribers right can you talk to us about how easy is it is to interface with the app to make sure you redeem and also monitor what's available there for me to use yes. so I don't run the risk as Southern mentioned of expiry and lack of use. Nowadays, you know, the key really is uh, to make it as easy to use as possible. So um, if I can download the app wherever I am in the world and automatically have a loyalty rewards program that I can use where I just have to input certain credentials so that I can have my cashier use it and then load it up with the loyal coin and then issue that as a reward and have the database or rather have the data analytics for you mm -hmm. then that's a very valuable tool so we wanted to make it as i guess idiot proof as possible mm -hmm. if there you know if there's such a way um these points are very valuable uh and we want to be able to give people more options and more choices and as as we grow the platform and and we we try to close as many countries as possible all over the world the customers all of a sudden feel that okay okay so wherever i go mm -hmm. i'll probably find a merchant where i can use these loyalty points well you've got that as the power of the blockchain and then you know there's a distinction between the road and the car right in this yes. case your platform is the seamlessness of the operability and the second one is the coin itself yes. now people still have uh, you know a lot of misimpressions about the, what the coin can do is there a valuation issue i mean you've got the plunge in bitcoin is that going to affect uh, loyal coins um, adaptability and value as well or even the negative press yeah. about it well there's always going to be a lot of negative press over something that people don't fully grasp or mm -hmm. fully understand and I think we're really at the infancy stages of cryptocurrency and, and blockchain mm -hmm. and um, you know Bitcoin just celebrated its 10th uh, year a couple of days ago so um, we're, we're still young it's still a young industry and and really um, what we need honestly is more regulation because regulation will actually give you more of an identity mm -hmm. and more of a roadmap and a rule book and stability Certainty, and stability right? yeah, exactly. and it'll also it'll also I, it'll also recognize you as an industry or as a, a, right. a proper kind of you. yeah technology so you don't see a lot of valuation swings if you have this regulatory bit and, and talked about about your outlook for loyal coin for example given that it's, it's within the space and a currency to use for these purchases uh, how do you see the value going well forward? the idea really is as we build all across the world right the idea is to be able to separate yourself from the mother cryptocurrency which mm -hmm. is Bitcoin mm -hmm. as long as you can uh, create your own kind of stable uh, cryptocurrency or digital asset then it becomes a lot more attractive we're all really looking for something that um, will will result to mass adoption and will result into something that the regulators, if they say, okay, we can finally define what uh, cryptocurrencies and, and digital assets are, then I think the market will open up. And, and we're talking about a lot of uh, fintech companies, a lot of blockchain companies here in the Philippines, yeah. that together we will band and, and you know, show the world what the Philippines is all about. And in your case, you're, you're having it as endemic and tied to this rewards program, so there should be traction already going on, right? Yes, there is. There's definitely traction going on. Um, we're, and, and the most valuable thing that we have right now is data. Yeah. The data of transactions, the number of transactions per day, the kind of, of uh, rise in sales because people know that you have this particular loyalty program. And um, really, it's an exciting time to be alive because three years ago, this would have been impossible because of blockchain technology. Now, finally, we can come up with something that, you know, as Filipinos, we can be proud of, a real blockchain company. This gives a whole new take on the term digital wallet, right? Yes, now, it does. I know, I know that you all usually talk to um, business owners, people who can use your app, but talk to the consumers. Give them tips. How do they use their uh, rewards and their loyal coins better and smarter well right now um, we're about to launch um, the ones that I mentioned mm -hmm. on the app mm -hmm. and it's gonna be interesting because the moment we have those numbers vis-a-vis -vis the numbers of the earning and redeeming then we're gonna be able to come up with a correlation between okay so people who earn points in a restaurant they'd like to use those points and use convert them yeah. into what would it be vouchers for 7-Eleven? Would it be vouchers for Grab? So December is really exciting for us because um, we're going to be... We'll spend a lot. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Could and you could data mine already from that as well. Yes. And that, that's really what makes uh, any, any tech company valuable. The kind of data that we have and can offer 
to not just the merchants, but also the customers.